Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, which has undergone quite a facelift in uh, this last generation. Mm -hmm. it's oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Here, here's where they're here's why they're losing. Get apology at church instead of the Eucharist. They just hand out whoppers. <laughs> <laughs> This is literally like saying Calvinists believe in talking donkeys. That is completely dishonest. Yes. <laughs> he is a Nicene Ninja Turtle. How am I the one that wants to be substantive here? All right. You I don't know? know. Now I'm just thinking about Burger King. Yeah. Exactly. I want onion rings. I. He's going to reference us as apologists. He's going to accuse us of, uh, us of a lot of things that maybe he's doing, but we are not doing. Jeff, I'm trying to help you be better at this because if you're talking to a Mormon and you're trying to, you know, convince them that they're wrong, you don't need to use these kind of warped terms. What cowards that they can only stand up against the most ridiculous version of what we believe. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to Ward Radio. I'm your host, Cardinalis. I'm joined in the studio by Quinku L and Brad Whitbeck. And also via the Zoom by Luke Hansen, head of the Cougar Chronicle. And today we're talking about a little bit of a hit piece that was made of us by Jeff Durbin over at Apologia Studios. These guys are sporting almost a half a million subscribers. And they decided they're going to come after us, those, quote, lion Mormons. Now, some people have actually kind of called into question the uh, authenticity of this claim and wondered why on earth is Burger King? <laughs> why is Burger King? Why is, why is Burger King coming after our boy Quakewell? You know what I'm saying? Why are they coming after Quakewell and Luke Hansen? Did you guys start eating Mickey D's and they want their business back or what's going on? I didn't say the last time I've been to Burger King, so I, maybe they feel betrayed. Look at him pointing at you. Look, look at him pointing at you. <laughs> you can't see the meme that I just put on the screen, but true or not well, true. I saw it in the Discord. Oh, you saw it in the Discord? <laughs> yeah, the true Burger or not King true. Master. You cannot say that Jeff Durbin, <laughs> Jeff Durbin does not have a striking likeness to <laughs> And I will say, having guy. met Jeff in person, his head is abnormal, abnormally large. He's got oh, a really? big, huge head. It's like legitimately, you're like, whoa, this guy's head is big. Okay, so Also, I Ted Cruz. I met Ted Cruz in person. Ted Cruz has a very large head. Actually, that's true. I've met him too. Very Same situation. big headed man. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, in in not shaken or shattered, what was, uh, what was the M. Night Shyamalan movie about the guy with The Last bones? Airbender. No, not The oh, Last I Airbender. Signs? Split? No, not signs. Split? Not split. No, much older. It had Samuel L. Jackson. Oh, the, the, sick, comic the sixth sense. Uh, forget <laughs> it. At the end of the day, he talked about how in comic books, the bad guys always had bigger heads. Ah. So anyway, uh, Luke Hansen was specifically called out in conjunction with our very own Kwaku L as being those lying Mormons. And we're going to debunk the debunking that Jeff Durbin tried to do in his collision series where he debunked one of our YouTube shorts. Now, uh, Jeff Durbin, consistent with all of our claims, you're invited to come to our studio. We'll fly you out, put you up in a decent hotel, and let you uh, talk it out here, hug it out. I would like to think that you're misled by a culture in evangelical and Calvinist Christianity that recycles old tropes and does not have a very good mechanism for getting rid of them. So I would like to think that you're misled. However, I do have to say that we're reaching a point where it's like, eh, you know, is it anti-Mormonism and are you clouded? Um, by your own tunnel vision or is there is there something we could talk out so we're going to debunk your debunking here it's unfortunately a lot easier than you realize and along the way yes we might make jokes that you look like the burger king guy but um anyway we'll just get started do, by showing do you a think couple an of apology clips. at church instead of the eucharist they just hand out whoppers <laughs> 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 oh Dude, please tell me he uploads onto like some podcast pop platform and Burger King is one of the ads. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Please tell me Burger King's one of the ads. So anyway, we're gonna check out um, we're gonna check out a couple of these clips and we're going to debunk them. The only thing I would like to point out before we start is um, I think you have to be careful how you title some of these things because oftentimes you paint the world with the oils of your own heart. And the name of this video is, you know, basically having to do with those lion Mormons, okay? And um, 
it's the whole series is titled titled Collision. And I, I think that's cool. You know, that's fine. The movie just came out yesterday or no, sorry, it came out today and, or no yesterday. And it's late anyway. Um, I just think you paint the oils. I uh, paint the world with oils of your own heart. We're not trying to collide with you. We want to build Zion together. We want to be part of the body of Christ and help you in your most noble efforts, especially against like abortion and service projects for those that are less privileged and so on and so forth. So we don't really see why you have to clash with us. We think there's much bigger uh, fish to fry out there, especially as Christians. And if we cast out devils by the power of Beelzebub, no, no, there aren't fish to fry. That's the that fish sandwich is at McDonald's. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Also, also, I know we've gone straight to ad hominem. (laughs) (laughs) I know they're going to point that out. But you know the TikToks where they try to prove that politicians are actually wearing a mask? Uh Does he not look like a guy wearing another guy's head? Look at him. (laughs) That oh, he one hundred percent looks like he's wearing the like, mask of a different person. It's a person. well-trimmed beard, but yes, it does give that effect. Okay, that is. Funny. He's a lizard person. I'm sorry. No, no, There's no, 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 no way no, no, he's no, not no. part lizard. <laughs> Look, no. David Ike, go on. Man. This guy's a reptilian Quaku, Quaku, shapeshifter. Quaku, he is a Nicaean ninja turtle. That's true. <gasps> maybe That's that, true. Maybe that was the, the the how the Illuminati has to show you tell you who they really are, so you can't get mad <laughs> okay. at the karma. Quick, ninja turtle. This guy's a reptilian. I'm calling it. <laughs> Jeff Durbin proved to me you don't eat babies. He no. is an adrenochrome <laughs> sucking baby eater. 100%. I don't care. <laughs> we did it. We see. He's going to take me to court. Your Honor, I don't eat babies. <laughs> Okay, okay. With that said, I think we've proved the point that I was about to make. I think I saw his name on the Epstein list. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Was he wearing the crown when he got onto the the Lolita Express? Are you suggesting he was wearing his crown when he got on the Lolita Express? Have you guys um, seen, you you guys know the, the Santa Claus, the second movie, the Tim Allen one, where he's fighting the evil Santa? I don't remember. That's like the third oh, one. Oh, you remember? vaguely, like in the back of my mind. Yeah. Forever he away. L- yeah. <laughs> he looks like nine different people. He just, <laughs> I've got so many references. Okay. <laughs> let us let me let me finish the substantive part You're right. of our claim. I'm sorry okay. for interrupting. How am I the one that wants to be substantive here? All right. You I don't know? know. Now I'm just thinking about Burger King. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I want onion rings. I. Okay. Like his church, it's also a business that's failing. Oh, <laughs> so. oh you bring up another meme that somebody sent us. When you talk about uh, businesses that are failing, I hate to say it, but this was the other meme. Profiting off God. <laughs> oh, that is a savage meme right there. Oof. Having to do with the fact that indeed these people are profiting off of God. So anyway, how to use Christ's blood to turn a buck. That is oh, brutal. That you know who made that? Yeah. That was made, actually, I won't say the uh, funny satirical magazine that they made that one. But yeah, that one was that one was pretty hardcore. Dude. So anyway, um, I was just going to say that my, my only real problem with this also thus far, OK, is I appreciate the engagement and he's doing us a favor. That's because true. He's, he's boosting our profile. Right. And he's got a lot more subscribers. But generally in the YouTube world, it's actually considered punching down for a bigger channel to go after a smaller channel. And he does indeed have almost half a million subscribers. And, you know, that's kind of actually usually used to be kind of one of the general things that you weren't supposed to do with debunking. You always punch up uh, if you try and do it on a smaller channel with no resources because we do not get paid for um, it's not even our services because we don't even say our ministry because he constantly accuses us of apologetics. Yet we are very open about the fact. In fact, if you go to our Twitter profile, we're open about the fact that we are not apologists. In fact, if you actually look at our profile right here, it says we indeed denounce deception, delight in truth. We have fun. We aren't apologists. We are radio hosts who call it how we see it. So he's going to reference us as apologists. He's going to accuse us of a lot of things that maybe he's doing, but we are not doing. And we are going to represent ourselves exactly as what we are. We're people who we smell a rat. And we're going to say that we smell a rat and Don't we're going to prove that we smell a rat. Don't say that about Burger King's meat. <laughs> that was not proven. No, Th- no. That was Jack in the Box. They couldn't tell what it was, but it wasn't rat. Okay? I, th- it could, I think it was ferret. There's a <laughs> number of things it could have been, all right? <laughs> okay, so anyway, with that said, please make sure that you smash the like button on this video. It helps the algorithms. Um, 
And yeah. also, make sure if you want to check a little bit Jeez, more. We're 12 minutes out, in. We haven't even touched we it. We've only radio. made fun yeah. of him. So anyway, here's the video. <laughs> oh, no. It's going to start right here. And you're going to see what he has to say about those lion Mormons. Mormon friends and family, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, which has undergone quite a facelift in uh, this last generation. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You can't go. We just made fun of his head for 10 minutes. And the first thing he says is facelift. <laughs> We're the church. The church is endorsing us to, as the facelift. He looks like he ordered his face off of Amazon. There's <laughs> just, it's just like so plasticky burger. Kit. Come on. Oh, come facelift. on. Stop making fun of him. No, no, I no. think he's a handsome individual. I think he's a very handsome and charismatic individual. He's That's just, true. He's just abusing his talents um, in unproductive ways, going after other members of the body of Christ instead of going after who the true enemy is, which I believe is wokeism. And if he actually were to stop and think and meditate for a second, I but think I will also say he did attack us, and us responding with jokes as opposed to attacking him is f is actually I think the way to go. Yeah, so it, I, I I agree, I agree. You always got to be yourself. So anyway, I'm gonna rewind, and we're gonna see exactly what he was saying <clears throat> one more time. Here is Jeff Durbin in collision with those lion Mormons. Uh, this last generation it's happened many times in their history but the facelift recently you know have gone, they've gone from mormon.org to the uh come unto christ the new website is of course the church of jesus christ.org and they've tried at times to get away from the title mormon uh, made a lot of old school mormons kind of upset and so is this guy mad about it, marketing face wait 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 yeah. wait wait this okay wait 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 he's you know, like they've done this a lot in their past can you believe they they've their generations have done different things in one another? Like oh wait 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 I, I just want to point out can you believe the that this ploy of this facelift trying to get people to use the actual name of the church? Yeah, it's what? Okay, like, well here's the other thing is he's he, he's he's insinuating that we are working in conjunction with the official church as part of some kind of PR maneuver. Well, that's debunking number one. I can assure you, Jeff Durbin, we are neither funded, it's ironic, but a lot of the woke scold ex-Mormon anti-Mormons accuse us of being funded by the church. Yes, our production value is very high, and as an independent movie and radio uh, content producer in Hollywood, I you know, would like to think that I'm somewhat talented in this arena, and I apply those God-given talents uh, towards, yes, defending the kingdom, uh, defending truth and denouncing deception. So yes, we have a high production quality, but this is actually indeed I, a Car labor of love. Cardin, I'm not sure if that's what he was saying. He because he said they've changed a lot in their history, and he's he's, he's talking about the church in general, not us. Yeah, watch. Let, let's. But just because let him we have a clip. website, like wait, you know, let's let's finish. Let him finish the clip, please. Let's just right. get through here, and then we'll let him finish the clip. Here we go. I uh, made a lot of old school Mormons kind of upset, and so it's it, it, it's a facelift. It's a marketing scheme. Much is being done today to sort of get away from a lot of the history and the classic teachings of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. But what is so pause, fast? Pause, pause, pause. Yeah, it's not true, dude. Uh, I love the music though. It's so laid back. Yeah, it's the, so the, chill. Uh, wait, it's almost wait. as though he's marketing Calvinism, and has a new facelift on yeah, Calvinism. Yeah, how, how many how many apostates is he burning at the stake? You're gonna talk about religions yeah. changing. Uh, also, <laughs> no, no, no. I, okay, his I, granddaddy I, was lighting people up like the Fourth of July. I want to take a second. <laughs> To be Jeff Durbin in like what 30 AD? 40? Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Let's go with 40. 60 AD. That'll work. These Christians are really doing their best to give themselves a facelift. They started off and they're they're telling people they need to get circumcised, but now they're changing that up. They're making it so you don't even have to get circumcised anymore. Now they're talking to the Gentiles. They're just trying to like really oh, change point. things up you know they're they're, point. they're really trying to market better to these gentiles and these romans and just m expand their church you know like what are you doing dude what's the number one rule uh okay so anti-mormon ex-mormons there's 30 rules um how you know you deal with the atheistic arguments and, and those are the rules of anti-mormons we shared them on the show there's only two rules remember with the evangelical and calvinist anti-mormons that they follow they always end up arguing like atheists or arguing like the Sanhedrin. Hmm. And what is Jeff Durbin's argument right here? Arguing like the Sanhedrin, you know, and it's 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 beclowning himself. But we'll let him continue. Let him. Um, but why let, did he choose those examples? 
because they're always I'm, I'm kind of surprised that you guys haven't brought up an accusation you commonly make which is that it's boring like i don't see how this is that's because we've been having video, i don't see okay, how saying we, the mormons changed fun. their website is supposed to be an, an effective hook it's also like we didn't change the name in. of the book of mormon either we were never called the mormon church he just called us that uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Well, it's, it's like, just hypocritical. I mean, look, here's a guy who's designed an entire studio around trying to look hip and cool. His entire persona is trying to be hip and cool. And I think he actually is succeeding. That's a very good looking set. That's a very fresh and modern set. And then to say that all of a sudden, oh, you're just trying to rebrand. Look, bro, I don't see you dressed like a 17th century Calvinist. But okay? also, I, I mean, want to see that glass now. houses, though. Glass houses. A few years ago, we sat in this very room. And we reviewed one of his videos where he tried to start a late night comedy show. Yeah, that's true. And it was so bad because they forgot to write jokes. It was. But so they went bad. and they presented humor, but there was no jokes. And he had like his staff be the studio audience. That right there is a media facelift. Yeah, we yeah. are. We have never done anything to the likes in our church where the, <laughs> Nelson has started late Latter Day Night Live with hosted yeah. by the Prophet. Well, let's get to the let's get to the rest of the video because we are but, only forty one seconds. Yes, in. but do you think he will ever hold other Christians in who which he theologically agrees with to that same standard he's holding never. us? Never. He will allow them to change. He'll never. do it himself. He'll give himself facelifts. I mean, by the media, not by that. And but us, we the minute you change your HTML. It, oh, yeah. it means you're up for grabs. It makes no sense. Yeah, that's true. So anyway, let's keep going. Jeff Durbin. Dating ...is to view the modern Mormon or the modern Mormon apologist in light of the actual teachings of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and what Mormon prophets and apostles have taught. So now he's saying, I want to keep it substantive. Okay, let's listen to the substance. And so we're going to get into this today by actually looking at a recent video. Uh, this is just a clip, a video of um, uh, Midnight Mormons. It's Ward Radio. Uh, and the title of the video is interesting. It actually says, debunking the evangelical lie that, quote, Mormons get their own planet. So just uh, brace yourselves. Here is the clip. And when you have enough <laughs> babies made in heaven, okay, here we go. you create, a, you take a planet, form a planet, oh my God. and then oh. you send your babies down to right, live pause, human pause, lives pause. and continue oh. the same cycle that's going on. Okay. Oh, whoa, okay. We're paused. Well. We're paused. <laughs> hey, congratulations, Mike Winger. You watched The God Makers. You watched The God Makers, yep. Cartoon. <laughs> um, he seems this to know a lot literally... more about exaltation than we do. Like, I don't know, like, what scriptures are you reading, Mike? I'm not... I'm just here in Doctrine and Covenants 76, and it says, The people who go to the celestial kingdom receive the testimony of Jesus, believed on his name, that by keeping the commandments they may be washed and clean, they overcame by faith, and wherefore, as, as it is written, they are gods, even the sons of God. I, I'm, not, I'm not seeing the collab or the infinite babies or the yeah. populating of planet. They th- I mean, or, does he, or think, any we, of that does he on, think we talk about this? All, do you think that's like half of Come Follow Me? Like they think that we like really believe this. That also, we talk about this wouldn't all the time. we be a more sexy, less frumpy people if we did believe in eternal sex like that? Like, don't you <laughs> think? Come on! Now he pauses the video after having you know shown what we said, where we said, "Look, we're being misrepresented here, and we're going to steal man ourselves because we have to do this." It is a trope that is recycled and was recycled in the Mike Vi- Winger video that we were debunking, who I realize is probably a buddy of this guy because they're both probably two or three of the most prominent YouTube evangelical slash Calvinists. OK, it is a constant trope put against Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. The, the sales pitch of our faith or one of the predominant sales pay- pitches is that you get your own planet. I mean, you get your own planet. That's why I joined. Yes, exactly. And. In the Mike Winger video, he literally <laughs> talked about the church hiring adult <laughs> pastor-like people to unbrainwash the missionaries who came home after talking to evangelicals who learned that that's not true. Now, it's one thing to say, eh, it might be interesting to explore the logical conclusions of the cosmology of Joseph Smith and the ideas of eternal progression. That's one thing. But to say that our mission... Uh, that our missionaries are sales pitching the creation and population of your own planets is a cruel trope that these people keep recycling. And when we say that that's a cruel trope that you're recycling, that doesn't mean we're not willing to explore explore logical conclusions. It means that you are recycling cruel tropes. So he's going to do a Mott Bailey here. 
Okay, he's actually going to say, oh, yeah, well, I was just trying to show the logical conclusion. No, 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 no. What we're saying is that you are misrepresenting our sales pitch and you're recycling a cruel trope. So let's see how he responds. What's being claimed here in this video with the new modern Mormon facelift is that it's a lie, an evangelical lie told about Mormons that, quote, Mormons get their own planet. Yes. Well, first off, no, you misrepresented the claim. Okay. I don't and know a single Mormon that even knows. Oh, sorry, ta I've talked a lot, Brad. Say what you want to say. Oh, I was just going to say, was he unfamiliar with Gordon B. Hinckley on 60 Minutes like over a decade ago when asked this very question, do Mormons get their own planet? He said no. Well, and like this is yeah. not a new facelift. This is like. <laughs> That's a good point. Like, what the heck, dude? Like, like we Michael, have been, yeah, yeah, we've been yeah. saying this for a while now because people are representing something that we believe in the stupidest, most ridiculous possible light. This is literally like saying Calvinists believe in talking donkeys. Like when they walk around and they do their missionary work, they try and convince people that donkeys talk. Just because there might be some one story in the Old Testament of talking donkeys, and these guys say that they believe in the Old Testament, like it's really a cruel misrepresentation well, of the church and missionary work. Another thing is the uh, like, uh, this is not an indictment of all evangelicals. Apologia themselves are masterminds at manipulation. They are they consistently manipulate everyone they uh, engage with. Um, and what he did here was he took our comedic re a YouTube short of our comedic reaction to a claim someone else made without showing the exhaustive claim that that person had made in that video. Just the infinite babies portion. Yes, yes. And then our humorous reaction to that ridiculous point, he is now reacting to saying that we're lying yeah. about original doctrine without mm. actually presenting the original doctrine so far. And without actually, he could have gone to their actual video. Yeah. And as opposed to the short of it, Interact to that, but, but he Quaker, didn't. That is what someone who is interested in like figuring out what's true would do. I don't think this guy is. And I get it. I get it because the line is out the door of orders, and they only have so they can only make so many French fries at Burger. But like <laughs> you know, you gotta you gotta be you gotta give them the full meal. All right, this is why McDonald's beating yeah. you. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. That was a good reference. Solid so, Burger King reference. Yeah, Harden. Look. Harden is exactly right. Calling this mom Bailey because, and and. I want to not, not apologize, but I want to say that even when we put that out, when we put that short out, people at the Cougar Chronicle messaged me and said, what exactly are you saying here? I don't get it. Are, are you saying you're debunking the fact that we think we become gods? And I was like, no, we didn't speak as well as we could have because we were in a comedic, excitable moment yeah. when we put that out there. And he had just said, we, we like gather together a ton of babies, have lots of sex, make a lot of babies until it's time to move out into a new planet that we're given. And that's the thing that we're saying. That's not it's, laid out that way anywhere. It's mm -hmm. just put in that way to make it sound as crazy as possible. It's kind yeah. of like atheists calling God Sky Daddy. Yes. And then, 100%. Yeah. And then yeah. the evangelical says, the evangelical says, no, what are you talking about? Come on, like, shut up. And they say, no, look at the scriptures. Heavenly Father, he's up in the sky with Stephen, all that. So he's in the sky, right? Okay. And here's the other parts that says he's your father. So he is your sky daddy, you idiot. So you, you're like, totally yeah, right. This yeah. is the level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and the thing is, Jeff, I'm trying to help you be better at this because if you're talking to a Mormon and you're trying to, you know, convince them that they're wrong, you don't need to use these kind of warped terms that make everything sound so weird. Just, just use what we use. Explain it the way we explain it. It's it's not really gonna hurt your position that much to explain it the way that we do. And I think we were a little imprecise in that video and it can come off sounding well, no, like we're, we're saying we don't believe it's, in the God stuff. It's comedy. Like he keeps accusing us of the okay, facelift I, of apologetics. We're a comedy show. Like, like that. I won't speak for everybody then. Yeah, th this. I won't speak for everybody then. I felt like I was imprecise in that. Okay, George. cool. Well, remember on eternal. And it came off that way to people. You're supposed to be point. precise with an academic apologetic response. You are supposed to be imprecise with comedy. That's true. Uh, also, remember, if 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 we in this video said, "Oh, that's ridiculous. We don't believe in eternal progression because X Y Z." Exactly. That's not. We were saying we don't believe. We're 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 banging for an eon just to make a like, bunch of children and put them in Jupiter. That's what we're saying. That's not in our scriptures. We don't believe that. That's never been taught. It's not in the temple. It's not in the Book of Mormon. It's nowhere. 
and we're making fun of the fact that this is what his buddy Mike Winger is saying. Yes, we are literally making fun of the recycled trope. So and, don't call us apologists. And what's great is what cowards that they can only stand up against the most ridiculous version of what we believe because our theology is so vastly superior to yours. <laughs> like, yeah. what the heck? I, I'm just, it, it saddens me. Try to steal man us. See if you can. I don't think you can. That's true. They never can steal man us. Because we can steal man them pretty good. Like I Because it. once they recognize that being joint heirs with Christ and becoming like our Father in Heaven means some form of eternal progression like Quake was talking about, and how awesome of a plan of salvation that is, oh man, then they'll start feeling the Spirit and recognizing that there's truth in here. Yeah. And by the way, Jeff Durbin, like this is called steel manning argument instead of straw manning argument. If we make fun of your straw man, we're not lying. We're making fun of you. And brevity, also known as being imprecise, Luke, is the essence mm -hmm. of wit. OK, so I will steel man you, Jeff. Just I will give you the courtesy that you didn't give me. But because I, I, I believe in being Christ-like and even our, our, our comedic endeavors as best we can, let me steel man your position, Jeff Durbin. You are heavily devoted to a creedal position of sola scriptura, in which the authority of God and the word of God and everything anybody needs to know about God is basically contained in the 27 books of the New Testament and, and, and just the Bible as a whole. And that's the authority from which you derive your ministry, okay? And us coming in with a new prophet, a new Book of Mormon, we violate that creed of sola scriptura. So you say, hey, red flag, major red flag for me. And you know, that's when we start a conversation. But when you misrepresent us consistently in a cruel fashion, year after year, despite ad nauseum rebuttals, that's when we start thinking that actually you are lying. And maybe some of this is a little bit of a projection when you call us the lion Mormons. So yeah. first it's things first, don't punch down. Second thing, steel man the argument instead of straw manning the argument. And then third thing is just maybe reconsider your online persona if you can be consistently mocked as looking a little bit too much, me thinks, like the Burger <laughs> King guy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here's here's the thing. It's like it's almost as though we're saying, "Hey, Calvinists believe in mind control." Yeah. Because like w what would you say to that? You would obviously say no, even though you do believe in predestination, right? That God knows yeah. what every action you're going to lo do mm -hmm. looks like. In the same way, no, we don't believe that every Mormon just gets their own planet. That is a gross oversimplification of the doctrine of eternal progression. Yes. Yeah, I, I look, I think we hit this hard. Let's, yeah. let's move yeah, on. Let's, let's move see on. what let's else move on. Right, How, right. I was about to say, let's just go through this. Well, you're up next, Kwaku. He's going to tear you apart. Oh, is he? Ah, Are you yeah. ready? Because I made goes. a crass joke, he's going to be mad about it or something? Uh, we'll find out. We'll find out. Oh, no, it's worse just than that. a couple of so years ago, just a few years ago, uh, before the attempt at this facelift, uh, was part of a show uh, <laughs> called Saints Unscripted. And in this video, the questions being answered, do Mormons believe they can become gods? Just the water, but, it's just gonna right. roll out. I gotta ask a question. We get planets? You get your own planet. Yeah. Because if so, I, there's a Google Doc I signed to get Jupiter, and I, I want Jupiter. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, Why is it always Jupiter with you? I was so adorable. <laughs> wait, wait, look. look at that. By the way, if there's any proof that we're just joking around, he decides to cite as proof that you actually believe in getting your own planet. You speaking like a <laughs> Brooklyn truck driver saying, yo, I got dibs on Jupiter. Yo, wait, give me wait, Jupiter. Wait, 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 wait. He, <laughs> he took a clip where I was being ironic. And he took and, he <laughs> and, and Kweku, This guy just took a clip where I was being ironic, making fun of them. Of that, the fact that they believe that that they think we think we get planets. He didn't watch the full clip. Wait, wait, wait. So right now in 2023, he just clipped me going, ah, "Is it funny that they think that?" And found an old clip me saying, "Is it funny that they think that?" And doesn't realize how, I'm joking in both. How many years ago was oh that? My, oh, how many years ago was that video? Well, six, something like oh, that. Oh yeah, this yeah. is a super new facelift, isn't it? Now, okay. pull over. No, no, I just want to pull up his face again. Okay, right there. Quick, look how disappointed he is. <laughs> oh, no, dude. Those guys hate me. He's just so disappointed. Uh, Can we just say that, like, really think about this. The clip he showed from our YouTube short is me making a joke about how silly it is that 
that he thinks we believe in eternal sex, and he being Mike Winger, and to prove that I'm lying about that joke, he gets a clip of me also making a joke about how we don't get our own planets. Dude, by the way, look that, up. That is the, that's terrible. Look up to your top, <laughs> look up to your top left right now on the screen. It looks like you're making eye contact with him. Oh yeah! <laughs> See, uh, right? It looks like he's looking down at you. Dare I say, like a sky daddy? You know, you know what's so oh. weird though. It's what? like there is a lot. Of, I mean, there's not as much of, of me on YouTube as there once was, but like there's still enough of me talking about eternal progression. How did the one clip he chooses happen to be the one where I'm being ironic, saying, "Hey, we actually don't believe that you get your own planet." Yeah. So here, let's go back to that's seeing lazy. what he, That's a lazy yeah, journalism Let, let him job. finish. Let him finish. Because I think it's actually someone else in this clip that says something more yeah. affirming. But we'll get there. Well, th it's also a joke. Just remember, it's it's a joke. Wait, so. why? Is so, so any video he is in is okay. But if I'm in any video, it's always a facelift? Yes. This yes. is It's in, it's intellectually dishonest. Okay. So yeah. let, let's go. Here we go, Jeff Durbin. You get planets? You get your own planet. Yeah. Because if so, I, there's a Google Doc I signed to get Jupiter, and I, <laughs> I want Jupiter. <laughs> I have a guy, do you get a planet? Um, <laughs> I think, well, I mean, it's not that we get, like, a get a planet, but like we're saying, like we believe we can become gods and we can create. Create. We have no idea. Look, she yeah. just refuted in real time. And where I literally just said, we have no idea. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So anyway, here we go. <laughs> so... Just a matter of years ago, uh, Kwaku, the guy from the end of the first video, really didn't have any problem answering the question about do Mormons believe they can become gods? And in this scenario, they all want to say, well, you know, it's not that we get our own planet, but we're like God and we can create our own planets. Now, what's interesting here in terms of the modern Wait, Mormon pause, face... Pause, yeah, pause. Yeah. What is he referencing? The, what? what? I, I was on a kid's show talking in a Jersey accent. About how it's well, I thought a it was a Brooklyn silly, accent. One of the two. One? one of the oh, two. Okay, cool. Where, wherever they have McDonald's and not. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so like I'm just I, I don't. Is this the best clip he could find? He's, and it, he's <laughs> sitting here. He's sitting here pretending that those are equivalent things, which just shows you how vapid he is in just misunderstanding our theology. You know what it is. This guy just really hates me, and he was like, "I gotta find something." I'm going. This he is just, I, he I can really see that. hates me. <laughs> this is literally like unironically calling Dave Chappelle a white supremacist, and then putting up his comedy routine about the black guy who thought he yeah, was white, yeah, and then yeah. saying, Dude, "This is proof he's a white he, supremacist and a KKK member." He just doesn't get it. He's yeah. sitting here going through trying to show how we're contradicting ourselves, and just still missing the fact. We don't believe it's this stupid little. We get our own by showing when we kids die. shows. That's an <laughs> oversimplification. That we're still funnier than his late night show. Yeah. Yes. All right. Okay. So let's let him finish the clip. Here we go. Left is that back in my day, and I feel so old saying that Mormons were ready and available to discuss this topic of becoming gods. It was something they were proud of. It was something that they said, okay. "Yes, that's what we teach." We're proud of it was something that they said yes that's what we teach we're going to become gods through exaltation through faithfulness and obedience well those saying, are different things those are different things yes saying yes we will become gods that's uh, apotheosis no what's it called again apotheosis yeah, yeah apotheosis that's different than saying the sales pitch of our faith is you get your own planet first off god's not a cheap car salesman Quit saying we're making our father in heaven a cheap car salesman. That is offensive, Jeff Durbin. And for you to keep saying that is a cruel trope. Just like I won't say to you that Calvinists believe that your God is just the wizard behind the curtain doing mind control because you believe in predestination. And let's not leave out the most important context of his review here. Mike Winger was saying we we're having babies nonstop in eternal sex. And we're reacting to that by saying, no, we don't believe that. And he takes a clip of us saying, no, we don't believe in, in having eternal sex nonstop into us denying the doctrine of exaltation. That is what the does he think exaltation is? Well, also, but, but that is completely dishonest. Yes. That is that is like that's the equivalent of what the journalist did with that sound of freedom thing. Yeah. Or yeah. or he <laughs> you know just, what I mean? Like or he just somehow still doesn't understand LDS theology. Or he needs to fire whatever intern put these clips together. 
<laughs> it didn't yeah, give maybe a combo. Whatever intern from a, a John MacArthur University, whatever it is. Yeah, this it was a you know, swing and a miss. But like, if if he got a clip of me saying, "We don't believe we're going to become gods at all," and then had the cl- and then was saying we they used to teach that, I'd be in trouble, and he would have a point. But he got a clip of us reacting to something silly that his buddy uh-huh. said, yep. which is not what we believe, yep. and juxtaposed that by saying, oh, they're denying what they actually believe. Th- that's just dishonest. So, I mean... So, Luke, which wow, uh, which video is next? Is it quotes or is it Isaiah quotes? Tell me, which because one is it supposed to be? he's saying that we're... And I guess he's implying that we're part of some sort of like overall church PR. He doesn't say it explicitly, but I don't know how else we're going to be participating I, in this facelift unless I we have like a that. meeting with somebody. I love that so much because it like legitimizes us so much more than we actually are. If you are. think about it, we pissed off but, a YouTube channel with half a million followers enough with our like... 12k subs you know what i'm saying i guess we're pissed off the right on, people. on the very day <laughs> on the very day he puts out this video uh you did the live stream card and the come follow me live stream and here's what you said in it you said oh, 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 oh sorry um it's more fulfilling and more elevating more beautiful to the max with a limited amount of time you had and to teach them how to progress and I want what's best for them for their progression as rapid and as positive as possible. You're talking about your children. So why is this so controversial? You know what I'm saying? The only title he chose was that of father. And what's the number one duty of a father is to try and make his children co-participants in the glory he has achieved. You know what I'm saying? And I don't know, to me, that's the natural or- order of things. That's like what our spirits naturally desire. It is because... So I you think... literally you literally said that in a live stream the day he puts this out, within did... hours of him putting this out. And he's saying that we're saying we don't believe that at all and we're part of this new facelift to try and appeal to the, the hip young people. I, I think, I think, I, sorry, Brad, you go and then have a thing. Yeah, mine's pretty quick. <clears throat> it's just that his conception of God just must not be of a father in heaven, but of a certain king. <laughs> Can we I, see what you did there? One Go other quicker. thing is though, um, uh, when I was on his show, uh, that was James White' big thing. He was like, "You guys have changed so much. Back in my day, you know, we were talking about this openly, like at the time of the pyramids." <laughs> you know, it's like, about? but what's James so, White is old. Yeah, yeah. Well, but what's interesting is like, they they. They want their narrative about us, our faith, and our in our culture to be the to establishment. Be, to be, but like they're the establishment, and they want it so bad for us to be like the the big bad guys who have more numbers, so they can so they can be punching up, and so they have to come up with this. In my day, I feel so old. They were comfortable talking about this, but now they've changed. We we, we haven't changed. You've just been wrong the whole time. Like that's yeah, what's clearly you were wrong back then. You're wrong now in this video. You can't eat you. We can prove it in two seconds by looking at the full clips that you're wrong. You were probably wrong in the '90s too. You're wrong now. Why don't you just stick to telling people that anyone who's not like you is bad? And you know, uh, uh, stick to recording people's confessions. It's a real thing. It's a real thing they did. <laughs> I've never heard that one. You'll have to. You'll have to. Bible thumping wingnut, who is actually an evangelical, if I'm not mistaken. Um, we got to remember, in the same way, like not all Mormons like our show <laughs> because no. we're you know oh, for sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of evangelicals despise apologia. Oh, I personally have interacted with a ton in leadership of churches where the like. I saw you in apology. I, I'm, I, I were not like that. Please do not take their assumptions. I would say the majority of evangelical Christians in the world, and especially in America, would find them disfavorable and say they don't mm. represent my Jesus. So and, let's hey, keep maybe, that in mind. That yeah, they're maybe, not like the like mm-hmm. most evangs are not into this whole thing. They're doing. Okay, and maybe that's part of why. And, and I back that up. I've heard the same thing. Yeah. So okay, interesting. All right, what's the second one? Is it titled? All right. So so this quotes. is this is when Jeff yeah quotes. So he's going to give all these quotes from Spencer W. Kimball that shows how completely wrong we are. When okay. We're saying that this is not something that we're taught. All right, here we go. Here is Jeff Durbin. This is him just completely murdering us. Okay. <laughs> oh. Because before the modern Mormon facelift and attempt at pure deception, and this is pure deception. <sighs> hey, saying it twice makes it more true. I'm sorry, but just like 
how can you say that you're trying to assemble the body of Christ when you're literally telling other people that they're out there trying to deceive people through their missionary efforts and this is pure deception? We're not. Also, notice the real deception is actually his vagaries because he has yet to actually establish what our facelift is. Mm-hmm. If you ever, yeah, if you ever want to know what the Puritans that burned witches look like, like this is literally it. Like I, I'm not That's saying a- that. That's a fire in the background in the left corner. Yeah, there. I, I'm not saying that to be cute or to be crazy, but somebody who's a young woman who I have family members that were in Salem in the 1500s during the trials. OK, like I've done my family history, my genealogy. Th- this is a reality only like for some people, 10 generations, 12 generations back. OK. If a young woman was good with herbs and had figured out that a certain type of poultice could heal certain types of wounds, men like this would literally come at them, shout a Bible verse at them and say, this is satanic and make no mistake, counsel in the city. Evil has come here in the form of this witch. And the appeal was just to the Bible. It's under the pretenses of sola scriptura that they burned witches And there's nothing different except for maybe slight levels of vitriol and anger. But the rhetoric of accusing us of deception right now, that's what the face of the man that condemned witches to death in Salem looked like. This is the rhetoric that they used. It is the logic that they used. And it is the appeal to scriptural authority that they used. Cardin, are you saying this is just the facelift of the 18th century Uh (laughs) Western uh, terrorists? Is that what you're saying? I see what you did there. I and see what oh, you did. Oh, you there. know what? What? They didn't have Burger King back then. Yeah. So. No. And now they char broil. Oh, that's, that's their true. Thing. That's, that's true. That's their, that's true. I, and I know it's low hanging fruit, but he literally has like the beard and the yeah. hair <laughs> of the actual like witch persecutors. <laughs> right okay, there. and look, also, maybe I know it's editing, but like. We all know you can look at someone and you can look and see if they have light in their eyes. Yeah, there's there's this is a this is the look of a hunter. He he's out hunting there's for no, prey. Like I'm sorry, yeah, this you is not guys the look disagree. of a, a builder or a farmer. This you guys may disagree hunter. disagree with me here, but like you 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 just look at this. There's no joy in his voice. There's no light in his eyes. It's mm. it's like I I don't see it. Yeah, I I can see what you're saying. I I feel like he's putting on a front for the entire thing. This could just no, be showmanship. I've met him. It's really well. He do, Quaku does have personal experience with. This. I've That's met true. him. I'm talking like the light's not there in person. It's yeah. just. Uh, I was hoping it was something like because he is trying to like. Take this thing that we're laughing about and show how evil Brad, we are. If you were a pastor and someone came to you to confess sins uh-huh. and you recorded it. Oh, my gosh. Did they really do that, Quaku? That was huge news like maybe two and a half, three years ago. That's so messed up. We will. OK. I, I don't know about it, but was it specifically Jeff Durbin or are we attributing something else from other people to? Because uh, that would be two different things. Maybe we'll have to do a podcast on that. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. That would be so, right. so that is an uncorroborated claim, and Tolkien actually do that podcast, and uh, we'll like. I'm not that saying and... there's rat meat in their burgers, but yeah, exactly. <laughs> Here we go. You see that the Mormon prophets had no problems discussing what they believed about exaltation, getting your own planet. Exaltation is such a far cry different from having eternal babies until you have enough that you're gonna go fill up a planet. By the way, these are guys that believe in resurrection. Do they really? Well, no. Think about this. This guy who literally believes that the entirety, well, not the entirety, but the righteous of humanity are going to be risen from the dead after having been laid in graves. The guy that believes that thinks it's too much that after we become eternal resurrected beings by the God above It's too much for him to believe that we'll just keep progressing after that. Again, when they argue, they only end up sounding like the Sanhedrin or like atheists. Okay. So anyway, let's let him finish the clip. See what he's saying. This is Jeff Durbin, anti-Mormon Calvinist. Is he Calvinist or evangelical? Oh, well, he's evangelical, but his theology is Calvinistic. Okay, cool. Here it goes. Planet. 
<clears throat> and populating it, you, has it within the realm of his possibility to develop a kingdom over which you will preside as its king and god. Oh, oh, you pause, pause, to pause. Develop yourself. Okay. I know what he's referencing. What's it's he referencing? Book of Revelation, where it says you will be kings, kings and, priests. and priests. Oh, also, wait, literally, no, literally, this a, is in the Bible, bro. Wait, sorry, no, no, sorry. One version says that. Other version says a kingdom of priests, and then another version says a kingdom and priests. I thought that they don't all say the same thing. I guess the sole scripture thing. But the point is, though, there is ad nauseum references in the New Testament to this. Now, notice Spencer W. Kimball here. President Kimball is not saying you will have the possibility to have endless sex and create endless babies to fulfill a world. He's saying you will have the possibility to preside over world like kings. Dare I say we shall rule over angels? Dare I say we will sit on the throne of God? As joint heirs with Christ. Interesting that mm -hmm. this matches the Bible, yep. but he's mocking what the dude that the can't Bible. point to the word Trinity in the Bible. <laughs> the dude that cannot point to the word Trinity in the Bible is telling me that my concept of the eternities is incorrect. So uh, let's keep going. Let's let him finish. And grow in ability and power and worthiness to govern such a world with all its people. We educate ourselves in the secular field and in the spiritual field so that we may one day create worlds, people, and govern them. So he's not found one pause, pause. Space yeah. He's not found one quote so far that matches anything we were re responding to, anything Mike Winger was saying. It heralds to it because he does see he does say there there seems to be plenty of space out there in the universe and the Lord has proved that he knows how to do it and, and he did say oh you know you will become gods and he says you will be able to rule over kingdoms and planets and this, and he, he, he's trying to take to its most beautiful extent the concept mm -hmm. of eternal progression yep. but again we weren't saying we do not believe in eternal progression. We were calling out Mike Winger for claiming to be an expert on Mormonism and then recycling anti-Mormon tropes about us. One of those tropes being that our missionaries go around door to door pitching the idea that if you believe in our version of the Sky Dad, you'll ultimately end up getting your own planet that you will have to rushingly populate <laughs> with some kind of form of eternal sex with whatever polygamous concubines you have. And, and now he's presenting this as, this as if this is what Spencer W. Kimball is preaching every day. Yes. When it's like, dude, this guy is teaching about Jesus Christ more often than anything else. He talks about this maybe once or twice. Yes. And this is an important thing that is a beautiful thing when you actually engage with it in a good way, not in a mocking way. And yes. Yeah, and and again, this is this is the beauty of the restored gospel. It's that we don't rely on vagaries. Mm -hmm. God gave us the gift to be able to look at the New Testament and also look at new revelation mm -hmm. that explains it further. We can see there's a beautifully laid out plan that the Father and the Son have made for us. And they laugh at that because they don't have anything else. They don't know what's going to happen in the next life. They don't know what sociality is like. Mm -hmm. They don't know what eternal progression is like. They have no clue. Yep. And so we say, come and learn. Bring what you have. We'll add on to it. Yeah. And they say, no, we're fine with being nothing. And, and I you're evil for having more. I can't. I'm just that is so. This bad. is literally the thought process of the secular progressives who say eat the rich. They have more than me. Therefore, they must be punished because equity is the yeah. is the goal. So, okay. oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Finish. Finish the clip. So, yeah. Let's finish the clip right <laughs> here. Please let me like, get to the end of it. OK, here we go. I'll try. There seems to be plenty of space out there in the universe. And the Lord has proved that he knows how to do it. I think he could make or probably have us help make worlds for all of us, for every one of us, 225,000. Yes, saying that God is indeed all powerful and putting our mouth where our theolo uh, sorry, our money where a theological mouth is and saying God has endless capabilities of creation. For guys that believe in ex nihilo, that shouldn't be too difficult. My father's of a house pill has many mansions. Hello. Yeah. So anyway, it will in Latin yeah. be Nilio, but my father's house has many mansions. 
Yes. There, exactly. there are like, like go to prepare a place for you. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So let's keep on. Let's, <laughs> we got to burn through this. Like we, we all know how intellectually dishonest this is and how it just reflects scriptures in the Bible. This guy claims to believe, but he just only gets angry about when Mormons use it. So here we go. Now the 10th president and prophet of the Mormon church, Joseph Fielding Smith says this, that great blessing of celestial glory could never have come to us without a period of time in mortality. And so we came here in this mortal world. Wow. It's almost as though we're talking about the condescension of God coming down from an, you know, immaterial world into a mortal world. And, you know, I just, this is pretty par for the course. We are in school, the mortal school to gain the experiences, the training, the joys and the sufferings that we partake of that we might be educated in all these things and be prepared if we are faithful and true to the commandments of the Lord to become sons and daughters of God, joint heirs with Christ. And Wait, wait, did he just get mad at the joint heirs with Christ verse? Like, when that was in Come Follow Me, Romans 7 through 16, just this Romans week? 8, Ro Romans does, 8, he's, mad, he's mad the prophet quoted Romans. <laughs> does he really think that he can read something like this and just because he's reading it like it's bad, people are going to believe that it's bad? Is that what his like Joseph Fielding Smith like? was reading the Apostle Paul joint heirs with Christ comes straight out of Romans eight. Yeah, you know what's funny though, here here's where they're here's why they're losing. Because if I was like, if you're a normal Protestant watching this debunking, you're gonna look at that and you're gonna be like, wait, am I supposed to disagree with that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm uh -huh. saying? you're gonna be like, wait, what? There's something crazy about this, Jeff. Yeah, and, and when he gets to this like idea of the opportunity of building worlds and peopling them, he he's I think trying to like drive towards that point in each of these quotes that he's getting to. It's like we don't know exactly what that's going to look the, like. The fact that he doesn't have a money quote shows he's being dishonest. Yes. Like, well, right here they're quoting the Romans, the Book of Romans, and they're saying they that uh, continuation forever. See, it's like yeah, wait, and, no, and and with this continuation of seats forever, he's he's trying to make that appear as though. That matches what Mike Winger was saying with, you're going to have babies and babies and babies and babies, and then when you have enough, you're going to go to a planet, and you're going to make that planet. Like, no, that's a ridiculous version <laughs> okay. of what we believe. Well, I don't even think we... Let's just get the end of this quote. I don't even think we have to go into the third clip. Luke, is a third clip just like these other ones? A third clip's short, and it brings up another topic that I can touch on very briefly. Sweet. Okay, cool. Let's well, let's it. finish this clip, and then we'll be done with this, because I think we've already shown the d intellectual dishonesty of this man. Let's keep going in his presence go on to a fullness and a continuation of the seeds forever and perhaps through our faithfulness to have the opportunity of building worlds and peopling them to become like him we must have all the powers of godhood thus a man and his wife when glorified will have spirit children who eventually will go on an earth like this one we are on and there is no end by the way that's actually this g heaven being like the earth, like this one that we're on, that's actually just a fulfillment of the Apostle Paul when he says the earth will be returned to its paradisical glory. Like this is literally just basics of the second coming that after the millennium, this world will be renewed from the fall. Does that make sense? Well, it's interesting because what is the, the opposite of this means no more spirits, no more progression, no more knowledge, you're nothing. Like, he's preaching damnation yes. while mocking exaltation. A full cessation of progression. And look, like, having other worlds that are peopled by our own offspring, which is what he's about to read moving forward, that matches us becoming like God because we are the children of God. Yeah. This Does is he weird. disagree with that? Well, Does also he not <laughs> think we are children of God? Because, yeah, if... if we are the children of God. Adam is God's son. Be fruitful and replenish the earth. That's what multiply. We were to do. It's like okay, if this system happens again, yeah, this stuff is. This so stuff let's is finish so this. I don't see how he thinks this is a smoking gun. This is weird. Let's let's see what he has to say though. Into this development, it will go on forever. We will become gods and have jurisdiction over worlds, and these worlds will be peopled by our own offspring which is the logical conclusion of apotheosis yes that's not the sales pitch and what we're calling you out on 
is cruelly manipulating what our sales pitch is. Mm-hmm. So, and, and by the way, it was a joke, but I mean, okay, presenting whatever. it in the worst possible light. Yeah, it's just cruel. It's not Christ-like. It's cruel. So anyway, um, last clip here, Luke, and then you get to have the last word, man, because he was calling you out too, bro. How'd you like getting called mm-hmm. out by Jeff Durbin, little old Luke? Oh, Hansen. he's done it before with the uh, video I did with David Alexander. Nice. Oh, kind of scripture that a little bit. Okay. And and I don't know if you guys saw, but he did the same thing with Jacob Hansen. He went and debunked Jacob Hansen's debunking of him, and he did the huh. exact same thing here. It was, it was hilarious. the straw man the, com- the whole way through. Yeah. And to the point that Jacob called his videos, Jeff Durbin destroys a straw man. Wow, nice. that's funny. Okay, well, here So it this is. is just kind of par for the course. Okay, well, let's see what Jeff Durbin has to say here in the final clip. It's only 17 seconds long. Wow, that's good news. Mm-hmm. In scripture, you have the clear statements all throughout scripture that there is only one true and living God. Isaiah 44, 6, I am the first and I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. God saying in Isaiah 44, 8, he says, is there a God besides me? Indeed, there is no other God. I know not one. Okay. All cool. right. What? So, what? This is, this is. <laughs> okay, wait, what wait. What were you going to say, Brad? No, go ahead. It, Go ahead with your point, Luke. Okay, so Jacob Hansen in his videos talked about this, brought up Michael Heis, Heiser or Heisner. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. May he rest in peace. His explanation about this. And so I know Jeff has seen this, and he yeah. continues to use these verses every single time. So let me explain for people who don't know what I'm talking about here. He's talking about, look, God is clearly one. There's no others. The Mormons are completely wrong because he said, I am the Lord God, and besides me, there is no other. But if you go literally two chapters later in Isaiah 47, it says, um, Wherefore, um, thou art given to pleasures, thou dwellest carelessly, thou sayest in thy heart, I am, and none else beside me. I shall sit as a widow, neither, neither shall I know the loss of children. So this is, oh, sorry, and we skip down two verses later, and Babylon is what it's talking about, says it again. And so this is a figure of speech that when you're yeah, saying yeah. Me, there is no other, you're saying I'm so amazing yes. that basically the other people don't exist. It like is. Burger King is so good that <laughs> basically McDonald's doesn't even exist. Like yeah. that's how uh-huh. good he says the same thing he says about Nineveh. There's no other city besides Nineveh. Uh, which obviously there are. Th- this is a figure of speech, yes. an ancient mm-hmm. figure of speech. And, and, and Jacob used a Bible scholar that Jeff Durbin said was a good Bible scholar. To prove to, that. Well, to prove thing- it wrong, Jeff Durbin allegedly debunked it because, and his response was, well, you don't believe what Michael Heiser believes about God, so there, and, and he just never addressed this, and he's still bringing these verses up. Well, and, and, the mo- and so something- when we're talking about if we're going to be as cynical as he is, which I don't want to be, but if I'm, I'm going to be as cynical about him, I would say the lying, deceptive Jeff Durbin who knows these verses say these things well, me- and just yeah. keeps saying it anyway to brainwash the people. Like, And Luke, let me add on. you got to be able to take what you're dishing out. We Glass denounce houses, deception Jeff. on Glass this show, houses. okay? And we delight in truth. So let's give the audience truth. Look at this in its ancient context. The first thing you need to recognize is they were not saying God. They had El, El Elyon, Elohim, a number of different words for the Father. Yeah, famously and, they used Adonai back yeah. in the Old Testament. And, and, and what makes this really interesting is the covenantal language being used here by God. I know of nobody else speaking for you. I, I am your covenant God. You are my covenant people. Hey, mm-hmm. this is my covenant city. You are my... There's not. It's not that there's no other cities, right? But what we've done through translation, if we've, we've taken all the different words for God, all kind of covenantal language, and made it into one, just mm-hmm. the word God. And, and so they now today go and say, look, there's no other gods. Well, there was the one covenant he was making with his people. Even in Psalm 82... He recognized the existence of other beings mm-hmm. and even other false gods that people were worshiping, but it never meant we would not become like him. It never meant we would never have exaltation. Yes. And they're trying to spin that and, to mean that you will become nothing. And it also shows just how deeply he misunderstands our position. Yeah. Because uh, do you think that 
this verse means that Jesus Christ will not be one with the Father, as he talks about in John 17. Ooh. And I have another experience with that. And, oh, by the way, in John 17, he says, we will be one with the Father in the same way. Also, he should agree with Joseph Fielding Smith here based on his hatred of Mormons because he believes in the Trinity and he believes God is Trinity. And he knows that Joseph Fielding Smith is not saying that we are going to become triune spirits or triune gods. No. So he knows that Joseph Fielding Smith is using the word gods. Again, a modern word, not a biblical word if we're going with the actual time period. He knows Joseph Fielding Smith is using the word gods to mean exalted human being who lives forever and will gain knowledge and power forever, not Trinity. That's interesting. He will, you will never find one video of him ever pointing out that delineating fact because he wants to keep his audience abused with a false narrative. Okay, so Luke, take us home, man. Give us our final thoughts, bro. Yeah, I, see, I know that if Jeff responds to this, he's going to, because we weren't all scripted out and had it checked with church correlation and all that, he's going to be able to find something and then present it in a way that makes it look like it's not what we were actually saying to his audience and then we could do this whole cycle over again and hopefully that doesn't happen um i've been in talks with him before to be on his show i didn't seem to go anywhere maybe you know the time frame just didn't work out i don't want to attribute those things to him but i had the same experience before with david alexander we discussed john 17 which brad just brought up a little bit ago jeff i have the video right here um jeff we quote john 17 Jeff talks about us quoting John 17 for 15 minutes until the end of his program. He never addresses the Jesus saying, you're going to be one the way I am one. He just jumps to earlier in the verse and says, well, you don't believe this other part. And just talks about that for a whole 15 minutes and never gives to what we were actually saying. And he did the same thing with Jacob Hansen. He did the same thing here. So Jeff, this seems to be a pattern and you'll be a lot more effective uh, talking to people like us if you address what we're actually saying rather than first trying to convince us we mean something else and then destroying that which is the uh, dictionary definition of the straw man fallacy okay you know i gotta say this is dark stuff it's dark energy i can see why so many young people convert from calvinism to the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints although i would give one recommendation to um jeff durbin Uh, Just as you recommended a little bit more uh, intellectual and scriptural honesty, I think he should just lean into the meme and just start running around offering free Happy Meals, seeing if he can't bring them back. Oh, they have the Whopper and that's it. I don't know what else they have. Here's the thing. If he responds to us wearing a Burger King crown. That's cool. That would be the funniest thing ever. That's cool. That's cool. It would be so funny of him to do something like that. It's funny. He he won't do it. Yeah. He he doesn't know it's funny. It's funny. Yeah. It's never funny. Okay. So anyway, those based in truth oftentimes are the one that have the most humor because truth is humorous. So um, yeah, let's see if he comes back with a funny response. That would be truthful. Anyway, let us know what you guys think. Follow us more on wardradio.com. Right now, tell me who you are.